So here's where we are. We say that all of these arguments are valid. They have something in common, and what they have in common is a certain pattern. And let's just focus in on the first one. We say, okay, Socrates is a man, all men are mortal, therefore Socrates is mortal. If we take a look at it, you know, all of these arguments, this is just an example, we could do the same thing. Let's put a triangle around Socrates. That is, you know, Socrates, you know, the triangle is mortal. And now, we could put squares around, you know, is a man men? So all the tri the triangle is a square, all or rectangle, all the rectangles are, oh, we need something else. Okay, so let's use these ellipses. So let me call them a circle. Let me call the other one a square and the other one a circle, even though they're rectangles and ellipses. So you say, tri the triangle is a square, the square is a circle, therefore the triangle is the circle. And notice it works in any of them. Look at any of the other arguments on the page that you can still see. This looks like it has the same pattern. And another way we can do that, and identifying the same pattern, and this is the step that makes a lot of people nervous, because the second you start doing it, this starts looking like math. Don't worry, it's not like math, it's not algebra that drives some people crazy. All we're trying to do is get a simple way of kind of naming a pattern so you can see that an argument's following it. So rather than the triangles and the, and the, the squares and the circles, what we're going to do is, you know, put X for the guy, the name of the person. Well, Cindy Crawford is also a guy. So, okay, and instead of the rectangles, we're going to use the letter A, we're kind of naming it. So instead of man, instead of was a politician, instead of tall, all the same thing. And instead of mortal, we're going to be put in Bs. So we see that the pattern, the logical form, or the logical pattern of all these arguments is X is an A, all A's are Bs, therefore x is a b. Now notice, it, once you get a hang of what the pattern looks like, it's a little bit easier than trying to think of whether you can come up with a counterexample. That is, whether you can come up with an example where the premises are true and the conclusion is false. So if we can identify logical patterns of arguments and you can get used to seeing them, it's going to help you figure out if an argument's valid or not.